Hello YouTube. Uh, as you can see, I just got a webcam and now you can see my gigantic beard and the rest of my face whenever I'm making videos. Um, I just wanted to make this video to answer some questions you might have and maybe some questions that you didn't have just to get my information out there. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, who I am, okay? My name's Andrew. You can call me Chet. Everybody calls me Chet, but my real name's Andrew. Uh, Chet, you betcha. If you're if you're thinking, why did you name yourself Chet if your name's Andrew? Well, Chet, you betcha is a character from the Fairly Odd Parents, okay? And it'd be like naming myself Timmy Turner. It's just it's a character from a show that I like, and that's how we got here today. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. I'm 24, and. Uh, I'm I'm a very large man, okay. As you can see by by the the general frame of what's on camera right now, if you're analyzing my shoulder width to beard height ratio, I'm a really big dude. All right, we don't need to talk exact size, but there's a lot of measurements that you're not ready for. All right, I'm a I'm a large man. Um, I have my chat up right now because I'm streaming this and they're going to be asking me questions to help me with this Q&A session. The next thing I want to talk about is, um, we'll get into the Apex stuff in just a little bit, okay? If you're here only to care about why I'm playing Gibby or how I became number one Gibby or anything like that, I'll, I'll get to that, but I'm just telling you more about myself right now, okay? The, the next thing you're going to want to know is, since I have a webcam on, um, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, his face looks kind of weird, or maybe there's like pixels missing or something. But when I look at the camera, you might see that half my facial hair is white. Well, not half, but the right half of my face is white. I have a skin condition called poliosis, okay? And don't worry, it's not hurting me or anything like that. Um, it's not like I have polio. It's, a, it's this very light skin condition where my facial hair, I think it's, it's hair like from the... The beard up is affected in small patches of anti-melanin zones. So what that means is where my, my excuse me, where my hair would normally be orange or black or brown, depending on your hair color, it's just absently there's nothing there, no pigment whatsoever. It's just pure white, and I have it on my eyebrow, eyelash, nose hairs. I'm not going to show you that yet. Um, Maybe for some sort of sub goal, I can show the nose hairs. Okay, but not right now. Uh, my mustache. The most obvious one is my mustache, because like when I'm when I'm sitting here like this, or when I bite my when I go like this, you know, I'd be thinking, "Wow, your mustache is missing some pieces." It's actually just white. It's pretty connected. But right here, this chunk, it's just white. Um, and then over here, my sideburns are also white, and part of my beard is white. It's it doesn't hurt me. It's nothing weird. It's not like I'm gonna die sooner because of it. It's just just some whiteness in my hair. And it's definitely not a sensitive subject. I am not shy about it or anything like that. That's not why I didn't have a webcam. It's just it's just white. No big deal. Um how tall am I? I'm about six one and a half, give or take. Uh when I was in the Navy, oh we'll get to the Navy. I was in the Navy by the way. When I was in the Navy they measured me at a flat six two but I think that they were like lenient on it. I've been measured at six one before. I've also been measured at six foot and a half. But my posture might have not been the best or something. I, I'm pretty comfortably measured around six one, and then on a good day, six one and a half. Um, so I usually tell people around there. Um, now, a little bit more about me is uh, when I when I was seventeen, I got a really high score on the ASVAB. And that exclusively, right there, me, here, I'll lean in closer to the camera, me scoring highly on the ASVAB is, uh, I'd say, about 98% of the reason that I joined the Navy, okay? I joined when I was 17, but I, I shipped out to boot camp right after I turned 18, but I enlisted at 17, and I straight up told the recruiter, yeah, I don't really know anything about the Navy, but uh, you guys made me feel really good about myself when I got a really good score, so I'd like to join. And he looked at me and he's like, bruh, you're working with a little too much 
thickness. I'm going to need you to sculpt that down. And uh, I lost... I, I lost a lot of weight. I don't know, remember how much, like 60 pounds or 70 pounds or something. And I joined the Navy. And I have a million Navy stories, but I won't go into that right now. I just want you guys to know I'm a Navy veteran. I only did four years. I was a CTR2. If you want to Google what a CTR is, I was a CTR2. I was stationed in Hawaii. And I met a lot of cool people. Some of them watched my Twitch stream. Pretty cool. Uh, it, I had a great time, but I got out because I hated shaving every day. That honestly, that's half the reason I got out is this beard right here really bothered me to shave. I hated shaving. And then also I didn't like running because as you can tell, I'm a very thick man. Okay. And running, not for me. Um, what brought me to Apex? Thank you, Lupus. That's a good question. The reason that you see me with these stats right here, I, they're not the highest. Okay. Uh, there's plenty of people with 100,000 kills. I'm not trying to flex anything, but... It is a lot to some people, and the reason that I'm sitting here with 100,000 kills is uh, when I was living in Hawaii, because I was in the Navy, um, I couldn't play Xbox with my boys because the ping was so high. It was like like 300 ping, or no, maybe not 300. It was just so bad playing with my real-life friends that I quit Xbox when I was in Hawaii. However, when I got out and I moved back, um, I got out in October of 2018, I played Xbox for like just a few months. I, I was living with the parents, just hanging out, just relaxing. And um, I started getting back into Call of Duty and oh my God. I was playing Blackout and Fortnite and I started getting good again. My aim was always good when I played Call of Duty as a teen. My aim was, I, I started out playing COD when I was 12 and my aim was always good, but nothing else was special about me. My reaction time, terrible. My Decision making, terrible. I was just the kind of guy that could kill somebody with a gun. Just That's the only skill I brought to the table. So when I got back into Blackout in Black Ops 4 and Fortnite, my aim was always good, but I'd lose every game. And then I started playing this game, you know, February 8th, 2019, my friend Corey's birthday. And I popped off my very first game ever. Okay, I had, I dropped a... I don't know, like nine kills or something with an Eva 8 and a wingman two times. And I was like, I like this. My first game ever, and I got here, let me show you on my screen. My first game ever, and I got this badge right here. Hold on, where's it at? I, I, I'm going to find it. I got this. Boom. Kill all three members of an enemy squad. My first game. And I was like, yeah, I'm probably the best player in the world. And then I saw what Dizzy could do, and I and I watched King Richard play, and I realized maybe I'm uh, I got some learning to do. But at the time, I was really confident, just like the ASVAB thing with the Navy. I got that badge, and I was like, "Wow, I have potential here." Everybody sucked. There was millions. Okay, maybe it, there was more than a million players playing, and I was like, "Oh my god." I really stand out amongst these people. I got three kills in one game. I must be the best. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, but uh, I kept playing and I kept playing. And I was a Wraith main, and I got like 4,000 kills in preseason. And I dropped a 20 bomb on Wraith my very first week. So, yeah. With the 20 bomb on Wraith, it bolstered my confidence to playing Apex a lot. And, uh... I kept grinding and grinding and grinding, and I found the looking for group section, you know, which is a, a feature, a function on Xbox where you can press two buttons and say, hey, does anybody want to play with me? Instead of just solo queuing, which I would never do. Uh, Pain, and death, nothing phases me. one thing led to another, and the people that I started meeting on LFG introduced me to more people, and they introduced me to more people, and I got into certain discords. And before you know it, I was a Gibby main. I'll talk about why I picked Gibby in a second here. But I was a Gibby main, and I knew just all the Xbox sweats. I was in the right Discord, and I had the right personality to intermix with them. I was just another Xbox sweat. Just from just playing a little bit every day and being in the right Discord, meeting the right people, got lucky. But eventually, um, in Season 2, the reason I started playing Gibby was... Yeah, Shredder, I'll cover that right now. Um, Fat American, hold on, I'll get to that in a second. Um, 
In season two, I started playing Gibby because if you look at this badge on my screen right here, this badge, the bottom one right here, that badge is in season one, win 50 games with seven different legends. All right. And if you're a one trick, say you're the number one wraith in, um, in Apex at the time, I think that was Zodiac in season one. I don't know. If you're number one octane, like egotistical nub back then, you're not going to be grinding seven different legends. So I saw this as an opportunity to make myself stand out amongst the sweats. I was like, well, I don't really have a main because I was, I was playing Wraith and Octane at the time. And I was like, hmm, I'm like number 800 Wraith because Dizzy was a Wraith. And there's like, uh, who's that? Diego Soros was playing. And like, I was never going to be number one of any legend, right? But I figured if I got this badge, it would at least be a good step in the right direction to say, hey, I know what I'm doing. I can get 350 wins a season. That's, that's pretty good. And then... Um, Season 1 came, and I got the badge, as you can see, because I have it. And but the last character I played was Gibraltar. Now, Gibraltar, at the time in Season 1, I believe... Uh, you might have to fact-check me on this. But I believe in Season 1, he got a, the Fortified perk at being like 10% damage reduction. Something along those lines. He got some sort of buff to where he was usable, unlike in preseason. So when I was playing as him to get this... He was my seventh character for this badge. I realized, bro, this dude's amazing. There's no way that Gibby's like the worst character in the game because I was like dropping. I wasn't dropping 20 bombs in 4Ks every game, but like 3K, 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 15 kill, 15 kill, 15 kill, just nonstop, just doing really well every single game. And and then in season two, they buffed him again. Not only did they buff him, okay, this is why I started playing Gibby. They didn't just buff him to make his fortified 15%. They made the best two guns in the game, um, the Longbow, if you remember that, Season 2 now, we're in Season 2 timeline. Season 2, it was Longbow and Disruptor Round Alternator were the best two guns in the game, okay? And guess what beats both? An Arm Shield with 75 health. You know how significant that is? The Longbow does 55 damage, and at the time there was no bleed through, so it would block two entire Longbow shots and five alternator disruptor rounds because it doesn't do extra damage to an arm shield it if you guys don't know what disruptor rounds are it would do like 30 damage to shields and then it's 16 damage to flesh so you just pop somebody four times and they're just shattered but the arm shield blocks five disruptor round shots and, or two longbow shots and those were used by every single person in season two every sweat was using those unless they were too good for them and i understand that but because of my knowledge on how to play Gibby in Season 1, I realized, wait a minute, he beats the meta. So I started playing him, and I was, you know, I was just a Humegalol with no, I wasn't very good. My KD was like 7.5 at the time, uh, but I was just a 3-stack Humegalol. And then, wait, let me get to my trackers. At the end of Season 2, if you look at this right here, Season 2 wins. I had 11.21 in Season 2. And that's number one. That, that's the most of any human alive on Earth. And it was my first time ever being number one for something, like, in a video game. Like, this right here, Season 2 wins on Gibby. I, it, I finally felt like I achieved something. I was like, I felt very rewarded. I felt like there was, this is the feedback, the positive feedback, the reassurance that I needed I was number one. How many times have you been number one for any stat? Like, it, it would be a huge deal, I'm sure. So, in season three, as you can tell, I got another thousand wins on him. Let's just, I'll just show you my stats. In season two, look. I, just do the job. I had a 12.15 kill death ratio. I dropped a lot of 20s and a few 4Ks. I, I dropped a 20 win streak, like a 54% win rate. I was killing it. In season three, I played a lot more ranked. And I played Scrim, so my KD is a little lower, but still, I mean, a 9.69, 69, nice Lamau. And I'm still a 41% win rate. Like, the stats were good, and I dropped a 6K and a few 27 kill games. Like, my confidence was super high, and then I looked, and I was number two for wins in the world. But I realized that I was really high in the leaderboards for Gibraltar kills, okay? And as you guys know, spoiler alert, 
Right now, on Apex Tracker, I have the most Gibraltar kills. And I got there <laughs> I just, just by... The what's the word here? Incrementally rewarding myself with feedback. Here, I'll oh, leave that menu. We're off to Olympus. This is something special. Uh, let me just block this guy real quick. I got there by consistently rewarding myself positive you know serotonin in the brain and everything saying wow you got a thousand wins this season wow you got a thousand wins this season wow you got a thousand wins this season just constantly saying nice achieving micro goals okay those were pretty big goals but achieving small goals every day every week every season and eventually i was only a few thousand kills away from the top and i just grinded hard for a month and i took it from zach and seafly now that leads into the next subject am i actually number one gibraltar that is a very good question. Um, I have a lot of respect for Seafly and Zach, and I don't have any sort of problems with either of those two. Um, the the thing is, Seafly switched to PC. Okay, he switched to PC when he got sixty-seven thousand kills on Gibby, and then so all of his progress is not tracked on Apex Tracker. So he is just just like Term, he is number one for kills on Gibby. It's like Term is number one for kills overall. He just has it on two different platforms. I, and I get that. So whenever I say I'm number one Gibby, I always try to caveat in some way. I always say number one Gibby on Xbox, number one Gibby on Apex Tracker, number one Gibby for this, for that, for this, for that. I don't want to discredit C Fly in any way. Um, and the same with Zach. Zach is in a really similar situation where he does indeed have more kills than me. However, the way that the website tracks how many kills you have is... Um, it, you have to have it updated on your trackers. So like this right here, <laughs> kills, <laughs> season 2 wins, season 6 wins, those are tracked. And since he doesn't use those trackers, the website never updates, and therefore, he is technically number 2 Gibby beneath me, but when that's not exactly true. Um, so he's number 1 Gibby PS4, and number one Gibby on one platform, but just on Apex Tracker and just on Xbox, I'm technically number one, and I don't, I'm not trying to dispute it. I'm not trying to say I'm better than either of them or anything like that. I just like to have the claim of number one on Xbox. That's all I ask for. All right, the next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, my stream, why I started streaming, why I didn't start streaming sooner, and my YouTube, which you guys are hopefully still watching me on right now. Uh, if you are, that's really dope. And I really appreciate you sticking around this long. Um, the, the main reason I started streaming was because of this great girl named General Jenna. Um, she was a big fan of this other streamer that everybody knows. You guys all know Tallis. Everybody knows him. Um, she was a big fan of his. And I was her friend. So when I started playing with, um, with Tallis... She really encouraged me to start streaming. And I told her, I don't want to be some guy that is using my friend's success as my own success. I'm not going to do that. No, thank you. So eventually she convinced me to by saying, look, you don't have to tell people you're streaming. You don't have to stream when you play with a popular streamer. Just, just stream like you playing single player games or stream like Fallout 4, stream... Public matches, stream when you play with me, stuff like that. And I was like, okay, fine. She eventually convinced me. And the the intent on my end was to get familiar with streaming and to have somebody there to watch me. That is huge. When you guys are streaming, to have somebody there for you to talk to, it is huge. If you know you're talking to somebody, like I know there's somebody listening right now. I know. I have some viewers on my Twitch stream and hopefully... If you're hearing this right now, you're listening too. I know there's somebody listening. But sometimes when you're a brand new streamer with zero viewers, you get really discouraged. And you, instead of commenting on something, you just, you just let it go because you know nobody's listening. But when you can be yourself, when you can open up because somebody's watching you, and you can say, oh my god, did you see that? Get the real, your real reaction out. It makes a huge difference as a streamer. Now, what ended up happening was my Xbox started telling people, Cat You Betcha's broadcasting. Click this button to watch. So instead of it just being me streaming Fallout 4 for Jenna, uh, 
10 or 15 of my Xbox friends started watching my broadcast too. And I got affiliate in like a week just because these these fools I didn't even tell to come watch me were like sneaking onto my stream. And at that time, uh, I was currently playing with Talus and he has a, when, when we were duoing, he had like a 800 viewer to a thousand viewer audience and my name really got out there. I had a lot of exposure and one thing led to another and he knew I was streaming and his chat knew that I was a streamer because he kept trying to promote me. Uh, he was a very good friend and he would always say, hey, watch this guy. Here's my arm shield, my Gibby, go watch him. He had a command in his chat to, that linked to my Twitch profile and everything. I, he gave me a quite a, quite a large Kickstarter. I believe he's the the biggest Xbox streamer, so he was probably the biggest Kickstarter I could have possibly gotten as a affiliate. Anywho, one thing led to another, and my stream started picking up, and I started feeling really successful until uh, the coronavirus. Coronavirus kicked me out of college. My college closed down and they, they weren't offering the online services that I could do. So I had to drop out of college. And that leads to where I am now. I share an apartment with my sister. I'm not living in my mom's basement. Okay, I'm still living with a family member, but it's not quite as bad as um, the internet trolls like to call me out for. But I don't have a job. Because right when the coronavirus struck, it was March of 2020, right? That was right when my Twitch started picking up, and I, I just, I felt really successful, and I committed to the grind to stream as much as I could, as much as I felt comfortable, and try to pop off and teach people how to play Gibby better or how to play Apex better, and just generally vibe Furta, you know, and. Uh, Along that same line of thinking, that's why I started my YouTube up. I just wanted to teach people how to play better while also saying, hey, look, I can drop a 4K20, praise me, but like low-key, you know. And uh, it, I just have a lot of support. I have a lot of backing. I have an active Discord where my homies hype me up. And my Twitch stream right now, who I've been ignoring to make this video, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm there's messages popping up on the side and I'm not reading them. It's because I'm making a video. But they hype me up in everything I do. And uh, they've helped me stay strong for the entirety of coronavirus, which has been over a year now that I've just been vibing. Not in college, just chilling here. No job, no nothing. Just my, just my boys. And um, I don't plan on switching to PC anytime soon. However, uh, I recently came up with the idea to invest, to make a huge investment into getting a streaming PC. And I think the streaming PC will therefore help me record higher quality YouTube videos, which will compound my successes in the future. But with that, that's all I have because that is the present. I'm going to begin a streaming PC within the next month. And then my next 4K20 video will be higher quality. And I can do more Q&A sessions if you guys have any questions in particular. Maybe you want to know about the Navy. Maybe you want to know more about um, why I'm so dang huge. Or, or how my KD got to how it is or something like that. Whatever you care about, feel free to comment below and I'll do another Q&A in the future. This one is pr running on pretty long. So I just want to say thanks again for watching the whole thing because it... It really helps me when the view time is high and the, the support is really high. It just makes me feel better about myself. And I, I need all the help I can get, dude. So thank you for being there for me. Have a good one.